Turning now to Ukraine, where the battle for the city of Mariupol rages on. Hundreds of thousands of civilians remain trapped there amid relentless Russian bombardment. MPS Tayeb is in Lviv, and he spoke with a family who managed to escape the port city under siege. MPS, good morning. Hey, Emory. Yeah, I mean, the situation in Mariupol is just horrendous. In fact, uh, we have the president, uh, Zelensky, describing what Russia's doing there as essentially reducing the city to ashes. But he insists that Mariupol will survive. And as you rightly point out, we have been able to speak to some people fleeing that area. We spoke to one family who's described the situation on the ground there as like a living hell. This carnage is what's left of the strategic southern port city of Mariupol, where Vladimir Putin's war on Ukraine is at its most destructive and devastating, triggering a mass exodus. Some of these cars have signs reading children taped to their windows as they escape with little more than their lives. Like the Vodazanska family, still bloodied and bruised, they fled their home in Mariupol to the safety of this church in the western city of Lviv. Once a typical middle-class family, it took Roman Svetlana and their children five days of traveling by road to escape Russia's relentless bombing of the city they called home, but now describe as hell on earth. Hell is when you don't know if you'll be able to take your next breath, if you'll have anything to feed your children with because they're hungry, she says. Hell is when you know that if your child gets sick, he will die. That is hell. That is hell here in the 21st century. Nearly 90 percent of all buildings and homes here have been damaged or destroyed in Mariupol, according to Ukrainian government officials. Video apparently showing tanks firing in the streets and armed soldiers patrolling what's left of neighborhoods. In the rush to flee, Svetlana injured her head in a car accident while avoiding Russian strikes, which have now completely destroyed their family home. What did you tell your children? The truth the way it is, she says, they will be told the Russians wanted to kill us, but we persevered because we are strong. Where do you get your strength from? <laughs> we are Ukrainians, she says. It's in our blood. Well, Svetlana there, clearly very, very defiant. And she says that although she hopes she and her family can go to the U.S. for safety, she wants the world to know this, that her family will come back to Ukraine, they will return to Mariupol, and they will rebuild their home. Emery. So, so uh, MTS, let's talk about why Mariupol is so important to Russian forces. Uh, give us the sense of the strategic rationale as to why they want that city so badly. It's extraordinarily important, Vlad. You have to remember, if you look at the map, Mariupol sort of sits on the corner uh, of the southern part of this country. Of course, it's a port as well, and access to the sea is very important. But what really, why this is really important for the Russians is if they manage to control this area completely, they will be able to collect, connect their forces in the east to those in the south. And they'll have locked this sort of necklace uh, of air of territory to the very south of this country. And that would be a significant strategic win. And that is what these forces are doing. And even though it's been described as a bloody stalemate, this fighting, we've seen Russian troops stall in other parts of the country. In Mariupol, the devastation has just been astonishing. And yet, Yet, there is a resistance. There's still street to street fighting there. And so Ukrainian forces not giving up on Mariupol despite that horrible, horrible damage. Vlad and Marie. Yeah, MTS, we have heard how desperate things are in Mariupol for, for people who are trying to get out and can't leave. And then I once again, I look at the scene behind you there in Lviv. And, and you know, just the other day, you and I talked about a, you know, Russian attack on a, a, an airport facility outside of Lviv, and I wondered if that would maybe make people a little more concerned. We're hearing from the president that, you know, or from uh, the U.S. intelligence communities that there's a possibility Vladimir Putin, Vladimir Putin may turn to chemical or biological weapons as he becomes more desperate. It doesn't look like they are anywhere near as concerned as you, one would think in Lviv. What is going on there? 
Yeah, I mean, Emery, you, you paint such an extraordinary picture of the sort of almost alternate universe uh, between so much of what's going on in the country and what intelligence forces or agencies rather are saying and then what you see around me. But you have to remember is that, you know, people here are in their own way, you know, living as normally as possible, being out in the sunshine with your family in itself is an act of resistance, in itself is an act of mm -hmm. defiance, that so many parts of this country you don't see sort of children running around, you don't see the kind of freedoms that you do, and people here are afraid, they are worried that the horrors we're seeing in places like Mariupol, in Kharkiv, in and around Kyiv, and in many other parts of this country will come here, and as you rightly point out, we had those missile strikes not far from here just a few days ago. So that war is inching ever closer. But as we've been saying and as we heard in our report, there is just the defiance here that many Ukrainians share. In fact, earlier today, we were at the train station where people from all over the country have fled. And early on in this conflict, you know, they were people who went there, the now three and a half million who've left this country, you know, were fleeing the fear of violence. The people who are there now have suffered enormous violence. And yet their heads are held high and they say they will return one day and that they will live in a peaceful Ukraine. And Marie, Vlad. The whole world is hoping that. Uh, MTS Tayyip, thank you very much as always, my friend. Stay safe.